My name is Dmitry, and I'm here today with my colleagues, Mohammed and Maiko, to talk about our recently launched service called Alexa Connect Kit. In this session, we'll look into the state of smart home today. How do you build smart devices? Uh, and how Alexa Connect Kit, or ACK in short, can help you uh, with that. We will also look into the uh, bit under the hood of Alexa Connect Kit, or ACK in short, and end up with demonstration of how easy and how fast you can build your smart devices with ACK. Smart home is not a new idea. It's been around for decades, but until fairly recently, it, it has been mostly limited to professionally installed and professionally managed home systems. At the dawn of the modern age smart home, a smart device was likely to be connected to your smartphone and controlled by the app on this smartphone. But the experience was fragmented. And if you had, say, 10 different smart devices at your home, you're likely to have 10 different apps and with different setup experience and different ways to control it. That still posed a very high bar for uh, smart home adoption. With introduction of voice control, a natural way of communication for humans, and voice assistance, smart home started to get mainstream. Let me give you a couple of numbers. Voice control is growing fast, and it's not only, it's not only about smart speakers. About half of the AVS devices that were launched last year were in different categories, such as smart home. Alexa is growing fast. We now have tens of thousands of products that work with Alexa, and hundreds of thousands of developers, such as yourselves, working on Alexa devices. So how do you build devices for Alexa today? Let's take a quick look under the hood of Alexa Skills Kit and see how a smart device is being controlled through Alexa. First, the user makes a request, primarily using voice and through their Alexa built-in device, for example, saying, Alexa, turn on the light. Alexa device detects the wake word and sends audio data to Alexa service. Alexa service does a natural language recognition and sends the request to the smart home service uh, or custom service in the manufacturer's cloud. Manufacturer cloud talks back to the smart device to turn it on, gets a confirmation back, and sends the response back to Alexa service. Finally, Alexa service sends a confirmation back to the user. If you look at that flow, even from a bird's eye view, that's a lot of infrastructure in the mix. For to build a smart device, the manufacturer needs to think about a lot of things. How to add connectivity hardware to their product, how to design setup experience, build Alexa apps, create cloud infrastructure, develop Alexa skill, think about features like all their updates, and after all this, maintain them. And that works well for manufacturers that already have this infrastructure in place. But if you really want to connect every device around us, we need to have some options. Enter Alexa Connect Kit, or ACK in short. Alexa Connect Kit is a combination of managed hardware, software, and services that is aimed to let manufacturers to focus on just two things out of this list. Design smart device and its logic, and manufacture it. Here's the hardware component of ACK, ACK connectivity module. You can see it mounted on top of our development kit. This module is fully managed by Amazon for the whole lifetime of the device. As devices are out in the field, we keep the firmware secure and up to date with the latest Alexa features. The module takes care of all the connectivity aspects for the product, including communication with Alexa services and man managing connection to the home Wi-Fi network. The module talks back to the existing microcontroller on the product over a serial interface, and matches uh, Alexa commands and directives, such as power controllers turn on directive, with uh, simple messages over serial lines. As a result, the development process is really fast, 
weeks instead of months or years, since developer can focus on matching the existing product logic, such as powering on the device, with the messages that come in from ACK module. But beyond simple connectivity add-on, ACK is packed with a lot of cool features, such as Wi-Fi simple setup. One of the major pain points of smart home device is how you connect it to the home Wi-Fi network. Remember the last time you connected the smart device? You probably use your smartphone connected to your device, found uh, your Wi-Fi network, remember your password, type in your password. Well, with Wi-Fi simple setup, all you may need to do is literally just plug it in. The way it works is that devices that are already on the home Wi-Fi network, such as Echoes, or other devices that support Wi-Fi simple setup provisioning, can help on board device, new devices that are being purchased on Amazon.com with literally no user interaction. If the device was purchased somewhere else or the user didn't opt in into this feature, he can still easily onboard the device just by using Alexa app and scanning the 2D barcode sticker, which is printed on the device. Another interesting feature that is being supported by Alexa Connect Kit is Dash Replenishment Service, or DRS in short. DRS helps product to track the usage of consumables. For example, coffee filters in the coffee maker. And alert the user when supplies are running low or even automatically reorder it. And there is more and more and more and more in ACK. Now, how it's been implemented? My colleague Mohammed will talk about this in more details. All right, thank you, Dimitri. Can you guys hear me? All right. So in this section, we will be talking about how to build a connected product with Alexa Connect Kit. So if you, are, if, you, if you have developed a connected product before, right, so what you will understand is like there are a lot of experiences that you have to bring together. So you have to worry about like how do I set up this device, how do I control this device, how do I update this device, how do I troubleshoot this device. And bringing all of these together, it requires like a lot of infrastructure. So, and, and uh, the problem that uh, it poses is like, you have to, you have to put a lot of uh, investment upfront. You have to hire iOS developers, Android developers, firmware engineers, cloud developers, and all, a lot of uh, this infrastructure requires like uh, upfront investment. So in this section, what we will do is like, we will take a look at like a simple non-connected device, like a fan, and we will see how do we build this with ACK. So just to give you guys a few data points, right? So typically it takes months and years to bring a good connected experience. Uh, we see a lot of products which were uh, brought to market and they don't have that good experience. And what ends up happening is that they get low ratings uh, on, on Amazon.com. And uh, one of our partners, uh, they launched uh, a Christmas tree. So it's an Alexa controlled Christmas tree. So uh, it was done in weeks, and the best part is like you, ha you can now talk to a tree. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> all right. So, all right. So let's take a look at like what is ACK. ACK is a combination of managed services uh, and hardware and software solution. So uh, what do we mean? What do we mean by managed? So what we mean by managed is that you don't have to write a single line of code for cloud connectivity. You never open AWS Developer Console. You don't touch any, any of that. So how it is developed, how it is managed, how it is operated, you don't handle any aspect of that. That is completely managed for you. So then the next question is like, what do you do with ACK, right? So as a manufacturer, you have to do two things. The first thing is, you go to this ACK Developer Console, right? And that is where your journey starts. So your first step as a product developer is like, you have to define your product. You have to define the use cases. So the use cases are something like, uh, if you're developing a fan, how do I turn it on and off? How do I, uh, 
How do I change the speed? So those experiences, I call them control experiences. So you define your control experiences in a developer console, and it's a graphical user interface. So you do, do that, and then you say, create product. So what, what happens next? When you do create product, it creates a virtual copy in the ACK managed service for you, a virtual product type. So this product type is created for you in the cloud. And the next thing you will do is like you will develop the product, the actual product. So two main steps. The first step is you go to the developer console, you create this virtual product. The second step is like you get this connectivity module. So Amazon doesn't build this connectivity module. This is not provided by Amazon. You have to talk to one of the suppliers. But what Amazon does is like it provides a managed firmware that goes on this ACK developer, ACK connectivity module. And what do we mean by like a managed firmware? The concept of a managed firmware is you don't have to worry about like how do I set it up, how do I secure. It creates a secure pipe to your virtual object in the cloud. So that is done for you. Sorry. So then the next question is like, okay, what do you do as a, as a manufacturer? So what you do is like, the, we also provide an ACK device SDK. This is provided as source code for you, and you integrate this to your application. So we handle, handle the control part, the update part, all those aspects. What you control over here is uh, the messages that comes down. If someone says, turn on this device, turn off this device, or uh, use any of that, that control functions, it comes down to this ACK device SDK. And you basically turn on the device, actually turning the device on. So the third aspect is like, you have gone to the ACK developer console, you have built this, uh, integrated this uh, hardware module in your, in your device. So then you go through something which we call Wi-Fi simple setup. So Wi-Fi simple setup, it connects that virtual copy in the cloud to this physical device. And the best part is that you don't have to write an app. A control page for your device is dynamically generated for you. You don't have to write an iOS app or Android app. Your fan, it will just show up in your setup. You will, have, you will get a page for that, a control page. And also, you get a voice interface dynamically generated for you. So you don't have to write skill. So, uh, However, if you, if you guys have a branded uh, device and you want to have a branded experience or you want to connect to like cloud services like IFTT or any of those, so you can have, uh, we provide extensibility APIs. So you can extend your application beyond just the Alexa uh, infrastructure, right? So you can go beyond Alexa. You have like control services or any other things. So you have, uh, build the services, you have, built the, you have created the uh, virtual copy, you have created the product, so your journey doesn't end there. Let's say I have like 10,000 of devi these devices in the field. So I can go to every single device and I can see what is my ACK firmware version, what is the version on my fan, fan application, and I can control and update every single one of them. So if you guys have ever gone through uh, troubleshooting a device, right? So what happens in troubleshooting a device? Is my f device on the right version? So I can basically go to a particular device, get the logs, restart it, all remotely. So as a manufacturer, I have a complete view of all my devices, all my fleet. And I can do a dial-up like, okay, I want to update uh, first 5,000 devices in first three days. So I can have a dial-up approach when I'm updating my fleet. And also, ACK has simplified certification, so you don't have to go through. Uh, it makes the works with Alexa certification easy for you. The module comes pre-certified, so you don't have to go through a lot of certification. All right, so now let's make a fan, right? So here we have a simple non-connected fan, and it has like three controls. You can turn it this on and off. You can set the speed to low, medium, and high. And then the third one is like, you can set the rotation, right? So rotation on and off. And I will walk you how we build this product, right? So as I told you guys earlier, you have two main tasks as a manufacturer. First is you go to ACK Developer Console. Here you will specify basic information. Like I've got a simple fan. My manufacturer name is Awesome Fans. And I specify the basics, basic information about that device. So the next thing is like, I have to define the control interface. 
So in the control interface, we have a lot of controllers. And if you're not, if you're not con coming from a smart home connected experience, like uh, uh, if you're not familiar with the smart home APIs, what this means, controllers means, is defines the control experience. So for example, power controller specializes in a control experience for turning a device on and off. So you can say, turn on a device, start a device, multiple ways. And uh, this controller brings that experiences. So some controllers are simple, like power controller. Some are complex, like cooking. So if you take a look at like microwave that was launched by Amazon, uh, we launched a crock pot. All of them, uh, they are based on the primarily the cooking experience. Because you can say, cook two pounds of chicken. So how that message, that cooking ex controller, it defines that experience. Uh, some controllers have one instance, some can have multiple instances. So for, for my particular fan example, what I will do is like I will pick these three controllers. So the power is for on and off. The mode controller is like I have three modes on my device, low, medium, high. And I will choose a mode controller. And then the third one is the toggle controller. So it can turn the rotation on and off. All right, so I have done that. What is my next step? My next step is like I generate the certificates. And then what I do is like I put those certificates on the ACK connectivity module. And it's a, the question is like, why do you have to do that? So when you buy this connectivity module from the supplier, right, it is blank. It doesn't know whether it is a coffee machine, it is a Christmas tree, or is it something, is it, is it a microwave, right? So you don't know that. By putting these certificates on that device, you uniquely tie this product to this connectivity module. So the next step is like, then you generate barcodes. And these barcodes uniquely identify this particular fan. So each barcode is like tied to a separate fan. And you will see like we have two barcodes over here. So we have a device barcode and a package barcode. So the device barcode goes on the device, packaging goes on the box outside. and the reason we put that is like because of the Wi-Fi simple setup. And when I will explain to you Wi-Fi simple setup, you will understand like how, the, how we connect the dots. All right, so you have defined uh, the, the, you have created the product in the cloud. So let's take a deep look at the control interface. So what you see over here is the power controller and it has, controllers are genetic bodies, right? You, when you specify the capabilities of that controller, you go specific about that controller. So for example, let's say I want to come up with a fan which cannot be controlled remotely. So what I will say is like the capability of this controller is remote. Uh, uh, you cannot update this like proactively reported. Uh, it cannot be controlled remotely. It's read only. If I make this read only, you cannot control this device remotely. So the second controller is like the speed, right? So something which we introduce in a controller is called a capability name, right? And what that means is that I can call this device speed, this capability. I can call it wind speed. So for example, if I'm saying set speed to low, or I say set wind speed to low, right? So I can create multiple synonyms of speed. So that kind of like defines my voice interface. Uh, same thing goes with low. I can have multiple synonyms of low. I can call it lowest. I can call it minimum. And what's happening here is like you're kind of like defining that voice experience. So the second one was the mode controller, and then the third one is a toggle controller. So the same thing is like um, you can have multiple instances of a toggle controller. You can have multiple uh, features in your device which requires toggle. And what we do over here is like we specify oscillation. You can also call it rotation. And what you're doing is like you are specifying uh, set oscillation to on, set rotation to off. So you, it kind of like defines your voice interface. All right, so the voice interface is done, right? So how do, I, how do you set up the, this device, right? And what we provide is the concept of a provisioner and a provisionee. So what provisioner does is like, uh, if you have like one of the Echo devices uh, and you buy this product, so the first experience which we have is called zero touch setup. That means I buy this device from Amazon, I plug it in, and my Echo device says, I found a new fan. And that's pretty much it. You don't have to transfer the Wi-Fi credentials, you don't have to link it to your account. 
So Wi-Fi setup basically accomplishes three things for you. One is it links the product to your account. That's the first task. So I've got a microwave in my house, but I have an account. So when I route the messages, it needs to come to my device. So the first step is like account linking. The second step is like it transfers the Wi-Fi credentials directly without user intervention. That's why we call it zero touch setup. And the third one is like it connects the virtual copy to this physical device. So these are the three tasks that Wi-Fi Symbol Setup achieves. And what you will see is that we are using an Echo device over here. But what if you don't have an Echo device, right? So what you do is like, then you use the packaging barcode. So the, uh, the device barcode. The packaging barcode is used in the fulfillment centers. So you scan it at the fulfillment center, and it does the account linking for you. But if you didn't buy it from Amazon.com, right, and you get the device or you gave it to your friend, right, so you can still use the device barcode and you can achieve the account linking, all those things we talked about. So what happens as a result of Wi-Fi simple setup? So what happens is like this control page is created for you. So this is the control page we talked about. The first one is a power controller, turning the device on and off. The second one is the speed. And the third one is like an oscillation graphical interface. And now you can start using like turn on my device, uh, set this fan speed, all those things. Uh, there's another interesting thing you can do is like you can tie to routines. So for example, if, if I say, Alexa, good morning, and I have a coffee machine, and let's say I want the fan speed to be high in the morning, so I will say, Alexa, good morning, I can trigger multiple events together with one routine, one command. So Alexa, good morning, so th that, that is uh, done through the routines, which is not manufacturer specific, but it can be a customer specific. All right. So now you have defined the product. Uh, just to let you guys know, up till now, you have not written a single line of code. As a manufacturer, you haven't done any of that work. So the next step is like, what do you do uh, on the product side, right? So first you have the connectivity module, then you have the serial interface. And now you have to handle two tasks. One is like, when you get connected, you get disconnected, you are registered, not registered, you need to tell the user by turning on a GPIO or turning a particular light, like a red means you're not connected, green means you're connected. So you just need to handle that particular as aspect. We call it like ACK app lifecycle. So you handle the ACK app lifecycle, and the second piece is like, you need to hand these control messages. So someone says, turn on this fan, turn off this fan. So it comes to your smart home device controllers, uh, ACK user on power controller directive is called. So let's go through a typical flow. So for example, I say, Alexa, turn on the fan. It will, uh, the audio stream will be sent to the Alexa service. Alexa service will convert this to a power controller turn on message. And this will go to the ACK cloud. And then this message goes to this particular connectivity module, right? And uh, from here, it goes to the ACK device SDK, and your ACK on power controller directive is called. So how do you handle that? So the way you handle that is like, the message comes to you as a uh, on power control directive. Uh, you can reply back with a success or a failure. So here I'm replying back with success, like the, the operation was successful. And then what I do is like, I grab the actual value, uh, the power state. The power state value is on, and I report that as part of my packet. Uh, one more thing that you can do over here is like you can reply multiple responses. Like let's say someone says, uh, turn on the fan, but I also want to tell uh, what is the fan speed. So you can combine these messages in one particular packet. So that's pretty much like what you have to do, right? So this message goes back to the ACK module. ACK module sends it back to the uh, ACK service, managed service, and that goes to the Alexa service, and then it re replies back. Uh, the operation was successful or okay or one of those messages. So now you have built the product. So remember, we talked about like two things, right? So one of them was you define the product in the cloud. So it is done through a developer console. And the second one was integrated by, uh, by creating this product, like physical product. Like you have to take the connectivity module, connect it to your circuit board, uh, and then implement that, right? So those were the two tasks you have to do, right? So this is like the ACK developer console, how you, how, I mean, you can, t so what you see over here is like something which is called modules. 
So this is a page which shows how do you create those capabilities. So we have the power controller, toggle, mode. There's one more thing we have here, and that is called endpoint health. So what does endpoint health do for you? Endpoint health is for heartbeat. So for example, if I have a product and I want to see like when was the last time it connected to me, or what is the firmware on that, or do I need to update that, or do I need to take any action on that? So endpoint health is used for monitoring that device. Uh, so when I do the Wi-Fi simple setup, so as a user, I get an experience, but as a manufacturer, I also get experience. As a manufacturer, I will see, like, here's the device serial number of that particular connectivity module. Here's a module firmware version on that. And then I can go and I can say that I need to collect logs from this device. Uh, I need to collect data from this device, right? Uh, how, are my people, how are the people using these, these devices? Do people press the on button all the time? Do people use the utterance, turn on the device? So I can get like metrics for this particular device. Uh, I can troubleshoot on device also. Like for example, let's say you have a customer support, right? And they get a call that this device is not working. So as a customer support person, what I can do is like, I can go to this, this ACK developer console. I can say, here's my device. And what happened, what is the history of this device? And I can tell the user, OK, press these two buttons. It will push the logs. And I can take a look at the logs, and I can tell you like what happened. So it is a very powerful feature live. Like These days, when we expect a connected product, we expect all these features in that connected product. So you can collect those logs. And we already talked about like the simplified certification. So next, what we will do is like we will take a look at, like you have learned how to build a product. You have learned. Uh, how to create the product, how to build the product. So what is going to be your like, first 30 minutes with ACK? And uh, I will invite Mike, and he will walk you through the development environment, the development kit, all those things. So, Thanks, Mohammed. <clears throat> how are we feeling, guys? Excited? All right. Oh, yes, I knew that. OK, so now we're going to have a look at the developer journey. So. If I'm going to get a development kit today, uh, I'm going to go home, I'm going to walk through like a, a demo and I'm going to set up my own device. We're going to have a look inside and setting up a demo ourselves. So it's a virtual demo. So where we're going to begin is we're going to start here, Amazon.com. We're going to order our very first Alexa Connect kit. And inside this is where we will get started. So they're around $200. And they're online today, so if you want to get started, jump straight on Amazon.com and order it from there. Okay. So we've got our Alexa Connect kit. It's arrived. This is what it looks like inside. So inside the Alexa Connect kit box, we have six main pieces. First is the micro USB cable, which will connect to our host microcontroller board. In this development kit, what you'll get as a host MCU is an Arduino board. And the Arduino board is what's used to, uh, to power the ACK development board. Inside, you saw there, that was the barcode, which is used for Wi-Fi simple setup. There's our good old Arduino board, which connects to the ACK development board. Inside that packet there is the ACK development board, which contains the ACK module. And that's, that ACK module is what connects and talks to Alexa. And last but not least, we have our small little LED. Now, what that LED is used for is an example called Smart Light. So if I want to jump on to the very first example walkthrough, we'll actually connect that LED to the development board and use Alexa to control and turn that device on and off. So running your first project. The link below is how we get started once we have our development kit. It, it comes complete with a walkthrough from setting up your development environment on your development machine, whether it might be Mac, I, Mac, Windows, or Linux, we support all three platforms. And it will show you how to physically set up the board and then how to upload code, all those steps. It's a very simple walkthrough. So we can actually start controlling that LED within, say, 10 to 20 minutes of setting up the demo. OK, so this is the fun part, connecting the two boards together. So. On my right is the Arduino Zero board. That's what we connect to the development machine. On the left, we have 
sorry, on the right, we have the ACK development board. And as you can see, the little module down below, that's the ACK module, which is communicating to Alexa. Now, you must make sure that when you connect these two boards together, that the pins all line up correctly and slot in, and it's a very nice, snug fit. If you have one of those pins out of place, the board may not power or function correctly, so just ensure those things are connected together. Okay, so we've connected our two boards. Now we want to start setting up the development machine, and we first start here setting up an Amazon developer account. So just jump on this link here, and we'll set up an Amazon developer account. This Amazon developer account is used to register our ACK devices to. So as Mohammed pointed out earlier in the um, Alexa Connect Kit console, where we see those modules and registered products, they're all registered and tied to an Amazon developer account. So we want to make sure that this is the very first piece we set up. It's very simple, very quick and easy. Okay, next piece is setting up the Alexa mobile app. So whether we have Android or iOS, download the Alexa mobile app, and what we will do is we will log into our Amazon developer account inside the Alexa mobile app. And inside here is where we start doing the, start doing the pieces, setting up, registering our development boards using Wi-Fi Simple Setup. Now the next piece to setting up our development environment is installing Python. Where, like I said before, whether you're on Linux, Windows, or Mac, we support all three platforms. We want to make sure that Python's installed on our development machine because the first piece when we download the ACK device SDKs, we want to set up, uh, we want to run a setup script. And that's built in Python. And what that setup script will do is it will install four example projects for running the smart light. There's also the smart fan and two others. And for setting up inside the Arduino IDE so we can upload code to the development board. So this is the Arduino IDE. And this is where we will jump into uploading code onto the ACK development board. So as I want to point out, we do support more than Arduino as the host microcontroller. The first piece we want to do here with Arduino is we want to download the IDE and we want to jump into the boards manager as you can see here. This package, the Arduino SAMD boards package, this is what we have to do first when we download the Arduino IDE. When the Arduino IDE installs that package, it might take a few minutes to install, but this will allow us to start communicating through the different ports on the Arduino board, which is the programming port, where we connect the micro USB to so we can start uploading code, and also the debug port. So if we want to start live debugging these boards, we have the ability to do so. So this again, this is the walkthrough. I'm just, walk I'm just going through each step one at a time. It's very simple. If you've never used this before, it can start from knowing nothing to actually uploading code and running your first example. So after I've installed that package, you would see those two ports where I can select them inside the Arduino IDE. Now this is where we download the device SDK. This is the Alexa Connect console. On here, we have things like resources for downloading firmware updates. Sometimes you might want to flash your ACK modules and upload firmware updates also the ACK device SDK. So that's used for running that setup script and for installing those examples inside the Arduino IDE. And at the very top as well on the left, we've got modules and products. So where we see the registered devices that we've used through the Alexa mobile app, we can jump into those two sections and we can see the details on the registered devices. So this is running the setup script. I'm on Mac OS in this example, and on, I'm sorry it's so small, but on the right here, this folder, the Arduino contains the setup script which we run inside Terminal, because I'm using Mac, PowerShell if you're using Windows, Terminal if, you use, if you're using Linux. Once I run that setup script, you'll see four examples installed, meaning it's run correctly, and once we finish installing that setup script as well, we want to make sure that we restart the Arduino IDE. Now we start getting to the piece of registering the ACK device with our developer account. So what we want to do is we want to jump back into the Alexa mobile app, click on add device, scroll to the bottom and you'll see development device. So this is where we're going to see Wi-Fi simple setup. I click next 
And what I'll be doing right now is I'll be holding up my barcode with my camera and I'll be taking a photo of that, of that barcode, as you can see there. And what it's going to do, it's actually going to look for the Wi-Fi point my mobile device is connected to. Once it finds that Wi-Fi point, it's going to then use that Wi-Fi point to connect my ACK device to. It only takes about 30 seconds. I don't have to look for those Wi-Fi credentials. I just have to take a photo of that barcode, and then that device will register to my developer account. Then that ACK development board will be connected to the Wi-Fi point that my mobile device was connected to. And you'll see a green light turn on for the status light, meaning that that Wi-Fi point is connected to the ACK development device. Awesome. So we've registered our first device. We're going to jump back in to the ACK Alexa Connected console. And I'm going to jump into the module section now. And there's my registered device that I just, just did in my, in my developer account. Products as well, which Mohammed pointed out earlier. See the capabilities? Those are the capabilities that, we've, that were registered to that ACK device. So power controller, mode controller, toggle controller, depending on what the de device supports. Those are the capabilities that will be registered there. OK, so now we're getting to the section of uploading code to the ACK development board. So we jump back into our Arduino IDE. Now what we're going to do is we'll scroll up to the top and we'll go to File, Examples. And inside that section, you'll see four examples that will be there that we can load one C sheet of code. As you can see here, those are those examples that were installed via the setup script. So in this case, because I want to I work with that demo, turning that LED on and off, I'm going to jump into the smart light demo. And this is the code. So it's good. I, for, a, for your first example, you don't actually have to write any code. Inside that C code as well, if you want to go into it into more details, which you probably will because you want to want to start writing code yourself, there'll be functions like on power controller directive. Those functions are the blocks of code that are run when directives are sent down to the ACK module board. So now we're going to get to actually running. So once, actually, sorry, before I go on, once I upload that code, the thing I want to do first is I want to compile the code, then I want to upload it. And the IDE will tell you when things compile, when they don't. You jump into the code and fix them, upload it again to the board. So we've now uploaded the code to the board. Let's now run this first, first smart light demo. So very first step, we're going to connect the Arduino Zero board to the programming port. And that's going to connect to our development machine. This is actually what we should have done before we uploaded the code. So see that white light? That means I'm not actually connected to Wi-Fi and the device is not actually connected to any Wi-Fi point. That white light will turn green when we're connected to the Wi-Fi point. This is the LED that connects to pin number 8 and to ground. When that's on top of the ACK development board. Once that's connected, the code's uploaded, we can start running Alexa commands through an Echo device, through my mobile device, and start turning that LED on. As you can see in the very, so you can't really see it too well, but that light was green, meaning that device is connected to the Wi-Fi. OK, so let's run our first Alexa command. So what I will do, code's uploaded. As you can see there, green light, meaning it's connected to Wi-Fi. I can say Alexa. Turn on my development device. Alexa, turn off my development device. And it's controlling the LED. Those directives are going all the way up into the Alexa cloud through the, through the different APIs that, can, that talk to the different controllers, like power controller, toggle controller, mode controller, depending on the functions that we're running, and the commands that we're invoking through Alexa. OK, now let's have a look at the Mr. Mr. Christmas tree example that Muhammad brought up earlier. So we're going to control a Christmas tree. This is my Christmas tree sitting back in my office. And that's me on my Alexa mobile app. And what I'm doing is I'm actually saying, Alexa, set Christmas tree to candy cane. And it's changing the mode settings of the lights. Now let's jump into that area with routines. So tying back now more into the Alexa story, where if I wake up in the morning, if I have a sensor set up inside my, my bedroom, that when I walk in, 
that sense is going to trigger routine. Or I might want to trigger it by saying, Alexa, happy holidays. And what I'm going to do here is that Christmas wreath is connected to my development device. And that Christmas tree is also connected to my Alexa account. And it's going to turn on in the same routine. So you can tie these things into a multitude of devices. I could even put a coffee machine there that turns on, turns on when the Christmas tree turns on. All by saying, Alexa, happy holidays. So I know that was a very simple example by turning on and off a light. Doesn't seem too impressive. But if we're going to extend the functionality now to an air refreshener, a coffee machine, a smart oven. So we will have extra capabilities depending on the device functionality. So, I mean, in that example with the Christmas tree, that was supporting range controller and brightness controller. The smart oven down below, that, can, that has capabilities that control temperature controller, time controller, preset controller. We also have up the top there the air refresher. All these will su support power control as well because we want to turn the devices on and off. But what I want to point out here, these are four examples now that are launched today on Alexa Connect Kit. Much more than turning on and off a, on and off a light. All right, so if you want more information, these are some of the links that you saw earlier. I'd suggest starting at the very top, have a walk through, have a look more into detail about the Alexa Connect Kit, more into detail about the development kit and what the pieces do. Documentation as well, if you want to run through more in the technical documentation and the forum. So if you've got questions, you're building your own devices, you might be prototyping, feel free to jump onto the forum and we'll help. We, can, we actually jump on there and we answer questions as well. And also, if you've got your own projects and you're, you're doing this at home, feel free to contact us. Tell us about your project. We want to know, and we're here to help. We want to help you get started. We want to help you move forward. So if you've got questions about your project, if you're stuck in pieces, jump into this link here. Now, we've talked about Alexa Connect Kit. What if you've never gotten started with Alexa today? If you want to get started into building skills, I suggest jumping onto this learning material here and you can even get certified as well. So if this is your very first time looking at Alexa, I suggest jumping here as well. So setting up skills is how we originally do stuff with talking to Alexa. Thanks very much, guys. Hope you enjoyed the demo. Feel free to come up and ask us questions. We've got a bit of time left.